Well, hello again, everybody. Today is Wednesday, September 9th, and welcome into another installment of our Keep Boone Healthy Facebook video series. I'm David Jackson, President and CEO of Boone Area Chamber of Commerce. And for today's Keep Boone Healthy conversation, we are actually traveling down Highway 105 a bit, and we'll, we'll hang right at the stoplight and head over to Lee's McRae College and visit with Dr. Lee King, President of Lee's McRae, uh, just uh, uh, not too far into his second year on campus uh, to find out what's going on uh, in the in the uh, neighboring areas and communities and how the Boone area business community can engage with another student population in the uh, Lee's McRae student body. So a uh, fun conversation coming up. First of all, Dr. King, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I, I know that the time of a university administrator these days uh, can take you in a number of different directions. So thank you for finding some time for, for us here this afternoon. You're welcome. And thanks for having me. I've enjoyed watching your, your weekly podcast that you've been posting on Facebook book. You're doing quite a fantastic job as a broadcaster. And uh, you've, I don't know if you've had a previous career or uh, other things in that area, but, but you, have, you have handled this very well. And I've, I've enjoyed your, your weekly updates. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this today. Well, thank you. I, I've dabbled in front of a microphone from time to time uh, over, <laughs> over my previous life, so it's certainly come in handy uh, once again. Um, speaking of things coming in handy, uh, it, it's uh, everybody that's in business, whether it's running a college, whether it's running a, a small business on Main Street USA, you understand how valuable your staff is to you. Uh, take us back to March when uh, Lee's McRae, like so many uh, institutes of higher learning around the state, was forced with a rapidly evolving situation and then had to quickly pivot to take care of the, the health and safety of your staff, your faculty, your students, all in a very tight window. How did you rely on your staff to get through those tense moments in the spring and, and learn from them over the summer? Absolutely, great question. And, and the, the backbone of every organization, as you pointed out, are its staff. It's people that, that uh, help you stay on focus with your mission, help you stay on focus with the things that need to be done. And certainly at Lee's McRae, uh, the strength of this institution is its people, its faculty and staff together. We are a really creative, really flexible, really nimble group. And the, the COVID-19 pandemic, especially dating back into March, really tested our nimbleness. It tested our creativity. Um, and it continues to be a hallmark of how we have, we have handled this. So uh, back in March, like most institutions of higher education, we were totally uh, not, not necessarily caught off guard by this, but because we have been watching it from um, happening in February as, as spread started to happen. And I remember telling our provost in February in a telephone call, we might want to have a contingency plan in place for if we had to go to a remote learning. And as we were having that call, he's like, you're, you're kidding me, right? We could, uh, why would we be, the, don't see that on the horizon. And I said, I'm at a conference right now, and I can tell you there are lots of other institutions that are beginning to think about what would we do if we had to shut down. So thankfully, Lee's McRae, like most institutions, was on spring break. Uh, so our students were already off campus. So the logistics of getting everyone home as we were, we were you know, dealing with a very fluid situation and we didn't really know much about COVID-19, how it was gonna work, um, what were the things that we were facing, uh, really, uh, was made easier by the fact that our, our students were gone, but uh, nonetheless, the workload was intense. I said a number of times, especially back in the spring, that I've used the cliche that is very much like we are trying to build this airplane while we're flying it, that a lot of uh, decisions were constantly being made. And often, I remember telling our board, decisions that we would make at nine o'clock in the morning were obsolete by noon because things were happening in such a quick fashion. Um, being a small institution like Lisa McCray, we're lucky that uh, being small can help us be nimble in a way larger organizations can. We actually, one of the things that I think I'm the most proud of that we did at that time is we, we formed an incident command system team. Local governments, big corporations and other things use the incident command system uh, to make rapid decisions, to uh, consolidate decision making among a smaller group of people that are able to keep their eye on managing the crisis or managing the incident. Uh, we moved to an incident command system uh, decision-making framework um, spring break uh, in March when we, were, when we were trying to deal with getting students off campus, moving to remote learning and other things. And we have kept that process in place. We've kept that team in place throughout the summer. And in fact, we're still meeting uh, together twice a week on our campus as we continue to manage through 
um, our response to the pandemic and all of our safety measures and other things. Um, it is a little bit of a, of a unique, interesting system for higher education because higher education tends to make its decisions more on a, a global basis with, with lots of voice and lots of input. So it's been a, a little bit of a challenge in an academic community to bring decision making around a smaller group of people. But it has enabled us to be very quick, very nimble. Um, and I think as I'm proud of it, it's been able, it's, it has enabled us to be um, very focused in planning our safety measures and other things so that we can get open safely this spring, this fall. Yeah. Sorry. I, I think that's one of the, the silver linings of this whole experience is to be able to see ingenuity and creativity work out in real time once again. And, and so many people had been set in uh, policies, procedures, circumstances that, that were just kind of rinse, repeat. Now, all of a sudden, we had to change the way we thought. We had to change the way we operated, as you said, in a very short window of time. Right. Can you explain for us what creativity and ingenuity looked like in weeks one, two, three, and four at Lee's McRae and, and how that, that mindset or that, that cohesiveness as a staff helped you get through some of that, that learning lab opportunity and turn that into your policy for, for reopening your campus in the fall. Sure, many of the, the things that we did early on um, were creative things that we had to do utilizing technology. You know, on, on one hand, the pandemic happened, by the timing it happened in the spring was, was good timing because we were Pretty close to the end of the academic year. Um, the, much of the academic calendar had already happened, but we were in the height of our student recruitment time, recruiting the freshman class that was going to be enrolling this year. So on a dime, our, our great staff in the admissions office, and I have to give our faculty huge credit for this, we put in place plans for virtual open houses, for opportunities for people to see our campus virtually, and uh, I'm confident that that creativity helped us not just save our freshman class, but actually helped us prepare in a stronger fashion. We had, um, we had been planning all year that, uh, especially when the pandemic happened, that we might end up, our hopes were that we would enroll a freshman class at the same size as our last year's class, which was 218 freshman students. Um, with, when the pandemic happened, gosh, all bets were off as to, to how we're going to do that. But our, when we put together our virtual open houses, we put teams together that were calling pers uh, prospective students, calling our current students and making sure that they were still engaged with the college. We actually, we had hoped for a freshman class of 218 students. We enrolled 247 freshmen, so significantly higher than, than what we had hoped. And our retention of our returning students this year increased 10 percentage points. It was the highest retention percentage in Lee's McRae's history. And I attribute both of those things, first and foremost, to the creativity of our faculty and staff, our folks in the admissions office, but um, how we were able to develop new ways of communicating with people and new ways of showing them our campus, but also the communications that we did with our existing students of letting them know the college is still here for you. We look forward to welcoming you back. Um, and I think many of the students wanted a, uh, were really longing to be back on campus and it reflected, it, it shows in our retention numbers, it shows in our um, increased freshman class. There are many small colleges, there are many large universities that cannot boast of exceeding their uh, first year recruitment goals and seeing retention increase during this time. We can do that at least McCray and I think it's a, it's a real testament to the creativity and nimbleness of our folks as we went through this. Well, and for those that might not be as familiar with, with how your student body is made up, can you give us a little bit of that demographic breakdown of in-state versus out-of-state, where the vast majority of your, your center of student population comes to Banner Elk from? Yeah, fantastic question. I, one of the things that I, had, that I said when I became President Elise McRae in the summer of 2018 is that I said one of the things that I love about Elise McRae or that, and that attracted me to Elise McRae, and I think attracts many of our students here, is that Lee's McRae is not what I call the plain vanilla liberal arts college. We have unique academic programs that, that in many cases have no peers nationwide. So we're able to attract students from a large geographic diversity that many small colleges of under a thousand students cannot. About 80% of our students still come from the state of North Carolina, uh, but, but others don't just come from neighboring states. Uh, some of our unique programs like our 
wildlife rehabilitation program. We're one of only three colleges in the country that have a wildlife rehabilitation program. Um, we have an on-campus wildlife veterinary hospital that takes care of 1,800 injured wildlife a year. Our new program that was a, that's a joint effort between the college and um, Beach Mountain Ski Resort, our ski industry business and instruction program, attracts students from all over the country and all over the world. Our cycling program attracts a number of students from Europe, um, as well as New Zealand and other places because of the cycling and training opportunities they have here. So we are, um, we're blessed that we're able to pull students from a larger geographic, um, geographic region than many colleges, very similar to Lees McRae, and it has helped us uh, maintain a strong enrollment and it's helped us, I think, um, in many ways be sort of a recession-proof college because we have um, unique programs that other people don't have. And, I've said many times I would not ever want to be one of those plain vanilla liberal arts colleges that are trying to compete against thousands of other similar colleges. Uh, colleges that are going to thrive in the new environment are colleges that are unique, that have a very well-defined uh, niche and institu institutional mission, and uh, Lisa McCray has all those things. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, academics and how that ties into the Boone community here in just a moment, but but let's uh, take uh, one more small step back into your fall implementation of, of bringing students back on campus, bringing those new students that you mentioned a moment ago. How did you work with um, uh, local partners, uh, be it government, uh, health department, and and everybody that needed to uh, to feel good about your program to infuse that population back into the community and keep the health and safety guidelines uh, all, all checked off in the box in the right way. Uh, what, what went into that decision-making process and ultimately how you rolled that out? Sure, I'm very, very happy and satisfied with the relationships we have with local government, the relationships we have with the local health department. As our incident command team started to put together our plans for reopening, uh, we had, for example, the two leaders of the Avery County Health Department were part of conversations this summer uh, was we shared with them our quarantine plan, we shared with them our testing plan, our contact tracing plan, and through that direct dialogue, we were able to uh, mutually agree upon the, the safety measures that we were taking and developed a framework for how we would work with the local health department, how we would work with local governments. Back early in the pandemic, we actually put together a memorandum of agreement with Avery County uh, to be able to use some of our facilities for auxiliary hospital space if that was necessary. Um, we did a memorandum of agreement with the Avery County Health Department that allowed us to really outline in a clear and concise fashion how we're going to handle quarantine, how we're going to handle testing, how we're going to handle some of the safety measures. Um, I, at every decision point along the summer, um, had multiple conversations with Rick Owen, the town manager of Banner Elk, with Phil Barrier, the county administrator here in Avery County. So there was really strong local dialogue with, um, with local government to give them the assurance that we were taking every possible safety precaution that we could and that we were, we were maintaining a good dialogue. One of the other things that I'm really proud of, uh, we've been working for the last two years with Ballot Health from Johnson City, Tennessee about the potential of opening a clinic here in Banner Elk to take care of there's a huge unmet need for primary care, uh, urgent care and other things. All of that came together at a, at a really fortuitous time for us this summer. Ballot Health opened their clinic here in town uh, July 11th, I believe was their opening date. They are one of our testing partners for, for COVID testing for any of our students that are, that are symptomatic. Um, and it has given us access to uh, an entirely um, an additional hospital system. You know, we have a great relationship with Appalachian Regional Healthcare System. Carmen Lacey and the staff at uh, Cannon Hospital and others have been wonderful partners with the college. But the, the opportunity of Ballot Health coming to our community has given us access as well to uh, an entirely separate um, healthcare system to be able to take care of our students, to be able to take care of community health. And all of these things coming together in the midst of the pandemic have helped give us reassurance that um, we're in the best possible place that we could to be able to respond to whatever the pandemic may throw at us with, with student health or, or local health. But small community like Banner Elk, Avery County, Boone, Watauga County, those are the, the positive things that can happen because of the, the great citizens here and the representatives of the major organizations that are able to work together for the benefit.
Well, sure. And, and, and certainly being able to communicate those things so effectively to not only the stakeholders you mentioned, but to the community at large just gives them a, a greater feeling of understanding as to what's going on across the street, so to speak, as, as they, uh, they move into a new time with, with all of these new circumstances. And, and kind of speaking of that, uh, you're writing the 120th chapter of Lise McRae's history. Uh, this chapter looks different than others, I'm sure, in a lot of ways. But, but uh, can you explain that relationship a bit with the, with the surrounding community? What, what Lees McRae means to Banner Elk, what Banner Elk and Avery County mean to Lees McRae, and how that's a drawing card for you, uh, for, for some of those student groups and, and, and majors that you mentioned to be able to get the, the right kind of fit for the students, for the programs that you're offering and, and able to give in such a unique environment. Yeah, great question. We have, um, you know, this is our 120th anniversary. Lise McRae has an, has an interesting history. We were founded as a mission school here in this area when there was not widespread, actually any public education in Avery County at this time. And um, our founder, Reverend Edgar Tufts, was, a, was a, um, an incredible visionary, not just with what he brought to start the school, but in starting the Grandfather Home for Children, Cannon Hospital, and many things that are still contributing to this community. Um, I say that Lise McRae has the best motto statement in all of American higher education. It is in the mountains, of the mountains, and for the mountains. And if you look at all of our, if you look, take a deep dive at our academic program offerings, many of them still reflect that institutional founding, that institutional mission in the mountains, of the mountains, for the mountains. Our, our programs in wildlife biology, our programs in wildlife rehabilitation, our outdoor recreation program, our nursing school, our, the May School of Nursing here, um, and then our new programs like the um, uh, Ski Industry Business and Instruction major all reflect the uniqueness of this institution and the uniqueness of this community. And, uh, you know, we're blessed to be in a community like Avery County. Lee's McCray is the largest employer in Avery County. The economic impact of the institution, um, our $20 million annual budget has infinite multiples of economic impact here in this community as our students and their parents and others um, interact here in the, in the local Avery County community. But, but for us to continue to be successful in our mission, we'll continue, we'll need to continue strong partnerships. And it's a lot of what I've been doing in the first two years of my presidency is, is building relationships with local business leaders, building relationships with local entities like Beach Mountain um, to make sure that those connections are there for our students and that the community understands how it can be involved in and how it can, can serve our, our institution. Uh, 120 years is a long time. And I'm confident Lise McRae will be here for many multiples of 120 years. Uh, this community has been the, the backbone for Lise McRae uh, throughout its history in times where we've, we've struggled, the community has rallied to Lise McRae. And in times where uh, Lise McRae has been able to support the community, we have done that as well. You know, an example I share is um, we stand, still stand ready and well willing and able if we need um, any of our facilities to be used to help with the pandemic or other things, we're, we're ready and able to, to have that partnership with our local, local leaders and local community. So speaking of partnerships, I, I know a number of Boone businesses uh, have, have oftentimes uh, looked toward higher education to be that, uh, that landing spot for the right apprentice, the right intern, the right part-time worker that, that can turn into a career opportunity. Uh, where do you see Lise McRae fitting into that conversation of being able to expose some of those programs like you talked about um, uh, in, in helping aid not only the, the immediate, immediate area around you in Avery County, but, but spreading your wings a little bit and getting out in a, to Watauga and some of the other areas and, and offering opportunities for students to meet business uh, at such a formative time in their, in their professional lives. Yeah, absolutely. We have, um, you know, one of the other hallmarks of Lise McRae is that we are a highly experiential institution. It's one of the reasons why we put so much emphasis into bringing our students back to campus this fall and doing it safely because the beauty of the Lee's McRae education are the experiences that they get not just in the classroom but that they can get out in the community. Um, we have been very diligent in the last couple of years and will continue to focus heavily on this in the future of internship opportunities for our students to go out and be working with local businesses and be working in some unique ways. You know, the, this is an outdoor community, for example, here in the in the high country, not just in Boone and Watauga County, but here in Avery County. Many of our students are very outdoor oriented. Elise McRae, two of the last three years, 
we were the uh, voted the top adventure college by Bob Blue Ridge Outdoors Magazine. Uh, so our students are involved in environmental work. They're involved in wildlife work. They're involved in adventure activities, skiing, snowboarding, rock climbing, uh, other things. There are great opportunities for the local businesses in Boone um, or the local tourist industries in Boone to connect with our students as potential mentors, as potential guides or other things that our students do. We have a fantastic business program here at Lee's McRae where our students are taught entrepreneurship. Our students are taught uh, the value of creating a business, the value of marketing, the value and, and have that expertise that they can bring to a, to a local small business that needs uh, additional help with how do, I, how do I reach more people through social media? How do I reach more people through the web? Um, students have an incredible amount of creativity and they're often an underutilized resource uh, when it comes to what they can bring to a, to a local business. Um, our business department, for example, here, and all of our academic departments really welcome um, local business leaders, other individuals to be part of working with us to, uh, to serve as a mentor. We have uh, mentors through the SCORE program of the Small Business Administration that are retired executives that live here in Banner Elk that are mentoring our students in our business program. Again, those are the magical things that can happen in a small college environment that cannot often happen in a larger institution. Um, and the one-on-one the -on -one relationships that a, that a mentor is able to make with a student is fantastic. Um, I would love to see us much more involved in a, in a, a well-defined way, David, with the chamber so that uh, businesses in Boone can be aware more of what uh, Lisa McCray students and our faculty and staff and others can be doing to, uh, to help them in any way that we can formalize those partnerships. Uh, sign me up that I'm, I'm happy to, to be the point person and connecting Lise McRae and, and our faculty and staff with local business leaders and individuals to, uh, to help. Well, we certainly welcome that opportunity and, and appreciate your leadership in that way of, of being willing to reach out, not only in, in great times, but especially in a time where our community is going to need more resources than ever to, uh, to get itself back up to and beyond uh, where we saw ourselves heading into this pandemic. So uh, we, we look forward to connecting uh, business opportunities with you and, and uh, welcoming uh, Lees McRae into uh, so many conversations about how this, uh, this area that we call the high country moves forward. Thank you so much for your time and, and uh, wish you nothing but the best of, of health and, uh, and, and good fortune here this semester and, and this academic year. And uh, hopefully year number uh, 120 ends on a much more positive note than it started uh, from, uh, from an operational standpoint at least. But I know that strength will carry you all uh, very well uh, heading into this special year. So thank you again for joining us today. Thank you for this opportunity. I've enjoyed the conversation and thank you for your leadership in the local business community.